On behalf of the faculty and the graduating class of Kennedy High School, I would like to welcome you to our 15th annual commencement exercise. This year's graduating class is uniquely special to me, for it was four years ago that I came to Kennedy High School as your principal. During that time, I have had the opportunity to see this group of young people grow and develop into mature and responsible adults. In a way, I feel that this commencement is a graduation for myself, as well as it is for you. This graduating class has set a high standard for every class that will follow it. It seemed as though I was sitting in front of the whole world. In a matter of minutes, it would be my turn to go to the podium. I would have to open my mouth and words would have to come out. My mind was racing through the events of the week before. Without a doubt, it had been the most difficult time in my life. It began on a Tuesday evening, four days before the graduation ceremony. I was at home, practicing my speech. For each of us, there are moments in life which alter everything that is to follow. As I stand before you today, this is one of those moments. And as I look upon the path in front of me, I cannot help but be aware of the obstacles that would rob me of happiness and fulfillment and perhaps threaten my very existence. Indeed, the problems that face our world are greater than ever. Nuclear war, worldwide energy shortages, failing economies, rampant crime, and the list goes on. Many people are not prepared to deal with the... Many people simply are not prepared to deal with the difficulties that face them in life. But, as I look back over my education, I am confident in the preparation that I have received. And as I begin this new journey, I carry with me the same promise that I carried with me four years ago as I walk through the doors of Kennedy High School for the very first time. A promise that, as an American, is almost inbred. It's a part of my nature, a promise that tells me I can make it, that if I am true to my goals and my dreams, that if I maintain a strong commitment to the future, to our future, then I am certain to be successful in this journey. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. Stop. Stop it. Yes, this is Mrs. Turner. You'll have to speak louder. I can't quite hear you. Yes, that's better. Oh? Honey, who is it? Honey? Honey, what is wrong? This is Mr. Turner. Who is speaking? What? Are you... Are you absolutely sure that it was Paul? Yes. Yes. That's correct. Yes. My brother was a junior in college when he took his life. Until then, I had somehow been spared of having to deal with any real tragedy. It was as if I had lived my whole life in a deep sleep and suddenly I had been forced to wake up. I wanted desperately to know that this was all a bad dream and that very soon it would pass and the next dream would be a good one. I wanted to go back to sleep, but somehow 
I knew that would never be possible. Mom, I... Just a minute, Will. Did you check your coat for that telephone number? For the last time, Carol, you never gave it to me. Mom, I don't want to go to school today. There's nothing you can do. This is something your father and I have to take care of. Besides, it's your last day. You have to go to school today. You're still taking your final exam. If you need anything, we'll call you tonight. Man, get so blasted tonight. Folks going out of town? Yeah. Hey, hey, we're talking party time at Will's house tonight. Where are they going? They're, um, going to go get Paul. What's wrong? Is he sick or something? He's... He's... Dead. I couldn't bring myself to tell my friends that Paul's death was a suicide. It was still too private, too unresolved. Death is bad enough, but with suicide, death isn't even the real issue. For my brother, death was a way out. It was life that presented the problem. That last day of school, I had two exams, but I couldn't concentrate at all. I had to know what it was about Paul's life that pushed him over the edge. I am no longer going to assume the responsibility for your life. Now, I've spent a fortune on your education, and just like that, you're going to blow it off so you can go to the mountains to get your head together. Well, you're going to have to face the music, because I've had it. Now... If you drop out of school, you're on your own. Fine. Time's up. Turn on your test. I was beginning to feel as though everyone I knew was moving in a direction different than mine. It was like 
going against the flow of a giant river. The air was filled with the excitement that comes on the last day of school. But for me, it was a distraction that made it all the more difficult to resolve the tension I was feeling inside. All I really wanted was a quiet place to sort things out. And there was just one more thing I needed to take care of. I had promised to show my graduation speech to Mr. Patterson, our assistant principal.